there are uh, already activists doing that, and and I think that if there should be activists in in inside speaking to these people, it should be those on the front lines and not privileged people like me, who are not experiencing the first-hand consequences of the climate crisis. Uh, but then again, um, I think that right now the changes that we need are not um, very likely to come from from the inside. Rather, I believe they will come from from the bottom up, so to speak. And um, because without public pressure, without massive public pressure from the outside, at least in my experience, and um, these people are going to go as far far as they possibly can, as long as they can get away with it. They will continue to invest in fossil fuels. They will continue to, to throw people under the bus for their own gain. Um, so I believe that the changes we need right now needs to happen uh, on the outside. We need to build and create a critical mass of people who demand change, mm -hmm. who demand justice. Um, and of course, we could do that also from from the inside. But yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, Helena, I mean, Ecuador is suffering its own concerns and deforestation and oil groups and gas groups and what have you. Just, just tell us, again, where you see the, the campaign going forward, because I, I think many of us feel that we have to be pragmatic in terms of working with and understanding the pressure from the outside as well. How do you see the campaign going forward from here? I completely agree with uh, with Greta that we need to build massive movement of people that are demanding change and that are demanding justice. Um, and when we are talking about the you know energy transition, when we're talking about the green transition, we also need to make sure that that is just. And I think that's really really important that we have. Um, voices uh, from the places that are being affected both by climate change but also by the place uh, what what the energy transition would, would mean for for communities on the ground vulnerable communities um, and 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 I think that perspective really needs to be taken into account by the private sector and, and it's a perspective that uh, cannot be left out um, because if we do that we're leaving out people again like just like we've done um, during you know the the entire climate crisis um, and I would like to um, we've, together with Greta, Vanessa, Louisa, and I, we've cre created a cease and desist letter um, uh, to oil CEOs, urging the oil CEOs to uh, phase out from fo new fossil fuel. Um, they, we know that they knew. Uh, there's a report that's come out saying that they knew uh, way before us what they were doing when they were exploring for oil. They knew what the consequences would be of uh, CO2 gas emissions. They knew the irreversible consequences, the huge impact it would have on people's livelihood, it, the huge impact it would have on the environment. Um, we launched this a couple of days ago and we're almost reaching 900,000 signatures, which really shows the commitment of youth, which really shows the commitment of, of, of civil society and people and the change that we are demanding. Um, and this is a message to, to these uh, CEOs and decision makers of how urgently we want and we need change. And we are um, very happy to see that this message is in fact in line with what the EIA says very clearly, that there cannot be any fossil fuel um, expansion happening anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, fossil fuel industries had 40 years time to prove that they're up to anything good. They clearly failed. And so um, the message is very clear, and this is not just clear to us activists, it is clear to people everywhere, especially those fighting um, at the front line. So we are very happy for you um, to be here today, and um, we would um, very much invite you to carry on this message um, with us, uh, Mr. Biro. So we already have our uh, open letter on 20, uh, no, 18th of May 2021 when we met the, uh, the clean transformation of the global energy sector, net zero 2050, we made our uh, report. So uh, we are very happy to see that the, there will be a big increase, hopefully for clean energy investments, mm -hmm. not uh, fossil investments, so that we can both have energy, because energy is a good thing, but it's better is the emissions. So we'll have a both energy and uh, we are going to reduce the emissions and their impact on uh, the climate. So I am uh, uh, very happy that the, the, uh, the our activist colleagues uh, here are pushing this agenda forward.